Good afternoon, and today we're going to talk about the parallels between pretty cars and bad dates. <laughs> I'll explain more in a moment. Before I jump in, though, let me let me choose myself and explain who I am, why I do these talks, and why you might want to pay attention to them. Maybe. My name is Barry Selby. I am sorry, it's straight here. I am an inspirational speaker, love and relationships expert, helping women create balance and love life. Oh, excuse me, helping women create balance in love, life, and business. I'm also the author of the best-selling book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, a book for singles and couples, men and women. And I'm also a passionate champion for the divine feminine, which is why I so much support women having what they want in life and love and business. And also what fed these talks, should I say inspired these talks almost three years ago in uh, 2016, when I started talking about this sort of topic theme arrangement. Um, and they're called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart because it starts in here to help you out there. And so today we're at episode 800, 852. And the topic today is going to be um, an interesting parallel. I was actually <laughs> browsing on Facebook Marketplace for cars. I'm looking for a new car, a new used car. And so I'm looking at the pictures of the cars and seeing some really cool looking exteriors. But my intuition is going, I bet it's not running, it's not going so well. Like it's a salvage car, or it's got some broken bits underneath. And so I look at the idea of how that parallels dating. And there's a lot of very um, uncomfortable parallels I will share with you in a moment. So the thing about dating is for many people, maybe not for you, but for many people, putting on your best appearance is the biggest focus you have. To dress perfectly, to align yourself, to have the right appearance and to look good. In a similar fashion, when people are putting their cars up for sale, They'll get them more detail, make them look pretty, they may give a new paint job, make sure they're sparkling clean so they'll get a better, um, well, they'll get a better price, but they'll get a better chance of a sale, which in a way, dating is kind of like selling. And yeah, it's gonna be painful to say it, but it's the truth, we are selling goods in a way. The caveat of this is that just like cars often may look pretty on the outside and be all perfectly detailed and look, everything's perfectly clean and aligned and all that sort of stuff, but meanwhile, the alignment of the wheels is out, or the transmission is going to fail, or there's, the engine is about to have a gasket leak, or something else is going wrong with it. But you can't see from the outside because it looks so pretty. In that same tone, dating can have the same sorts of um, hidden flaws that you know not made aware of. So somebody might look perfectly grateful when they show up on a date, but inside they're carrying around unresolved anger or extreme attachment to their ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, depending on what you're looking for. Or they basically are in such resentment to their ex that they will basically take it out on you. I mean, there's a lot of different things I can put in here as, as, um, <laughs> as parallels, but I want to speak to more of the theme of this. The idea being is that, that for many people, the external appearance of the car, when you're looking to buy one, and the external appearance of the person on the date is more noticeable, yes, and sometimes more appealing than what's going on underneath the skin, so to speak, or underneath the sheet metal for the cars. And so we fall in this trap where we start looking for someone we want to meet, and we get very drawn into how they look. And this actually was tying in some previous talks I did over the weekend about the dating apps and how the pictures that we see on dating apps are often very misleading because they make it look much more approachable, attractive, and appealing approachable, attractive, appealing. Yeah, I make sure you three different words there. But when you get to meet them, they're like, oh God, what did I get myself into? And you know what I mean. For example, let's start with some simple ones. You go out with a date with somebody and everything's going fine, but after the date, they disappear off the planet. They ghost you, basically. That isn't exactly fun. And that's really some sort of disjointed, dysfunctional, unresolved issue below the surface that doesn't help you in any way. In addition, or another level of that, if somebody you go out with a few times, then you find out that they're in a relationship with somebody else, and you didn't know that. And you're not looking for the polyamory, you're actually looking for a monogamous relationship. Let me, cut, let me preface it with that. That's a slightly more serious issue slash fault with the car parallels. Again, using the parallels that way. But then you've got these things that are basically, I actually did a post a meme a few days ago about um, ladies, you don't want to, you don't want to, um, or what was it about it? It was something about how you don't want a man that needs to save because you don't want to date a baby. Something like that connotation. 
there's the extreme fixer uppers, both dates and cars. So using the, I, I'm a car fanatic, so I'm using that a bit more analogy leading into that. So you might be going with somebody who's who you might sorry excuse me you might be looking at a car where the paint job is immaculate, but when you open the door and look at the interior and all the seats are torn up, and it's oil and li liquids all underneath the car is leaking terribly, like everything's gone wrong except it looks okay from the outside. How many dates have you been on with people who are like that too? They appear totally wonderful, but you find out that they are in dysfunctional relationships still, that they don't they don't have um, mental or emotional stability. Maybe they're not taking care of themselves at all and they're actually wearing a corset to keep themselves in so that they look like they've got a flat stomach, you know, that sort of thing. And people do this stuff, just to be clear. Unfortunately, it's not as easy to figure that stuff out before you meet somebody. But the same thing is when you go look at a car. Sometimes you fall in love with the car because it's a great color paint. These are, it was my favorite color. And we ignore everything else. But the thing is, when you go to look at a car, hopefully with somebody else with you, this is something I've learned my lesson on, they can talk you out of the insanity sometimes. And basically when you go look at the car and somebody is with you, they'll point out the things that you're not actually noticing, maybe you're missing them. So when you actually start realizing what you're looking at, you're going, this isn't a good deal, I'm gonna walk away. Now, I'm not saying you take somebody with you on your dates. <laughs> That's not recommending that. However, you might wanna have somebody as your, um, sort of like an accountability partner, but somebody you could trust, that you do trust, and they could be the same gender or the opposite gender, depending on what, you, what your close friends are like, but somebody you can, can compare notes with and give, them, and give them the story of what you experienced so they can hopefully give you clear feedback. That's an opportunity. It's not the requirement, but it's an idea where you basically have a better, clearer vision because you use somebody else's eyes to see what's going on versus your own. Is it making sense? I hope it is. So the parallels continue. <laughs> Again, you might get this car that looks wonderful. And maybe it is okay looking, but doesn't you don't find out until you've driven the car for two months, three months, that there's a major trouble coming through. Like you're noticing suddenly that the engine's doing some strange noises or it's the lights are coming on the dashboard and things are going wrong. You're like, oh crap, what have I got myself into? You've had the experience in relationships perhaps too, where two or three months into the relationship, you're realizing that maybe this person isn't what you thought they were like. Again, up front, it's hard to tell these things. But I did talk yesterday about um, trusting your gut instinct, your intuition and your heart, because those three um, resources are extremely useful for detecting bullshit and other things that aren't working. They also work when you're looking at cars, by the way. I have had definite hunches when I went to look at a car, and I've actually done this myself, where I overrode what I knew to be true, intuitively, and bought a car that ended up costing me a lot of money down the road. I'm trying to think if I've had a similar experience with dates. Actually, no, I've been better at that. <laughs> Interestingly, I'm just realizing now. I've been better at basically realizing up front, energetically, I could feel the dis misalignment with the date, and I, I know in a couple, of instances I a couple of instances I dodged a bullet. And hopefully for you too, especially for the women watching this, when you go with men, you want to be really cautious to know what you're walking into so you take care of yourself. So that when you do trust your th those three aspects, again, heart, intuition, and gut instinct, you become much more aware of what's going on that you don't necessarily see with your eyes or hear with your ears. You can sense things beyond the five senses that will lead you to a place of better resource and give you more wisdom to step away, to walk away, to leave if it's not lining up. And also, because some of you may be gun shy, to be more aware to step in when you feel that aligns too, because maybe head's going, oh, I don't wanna deal with this because you're afraid of what's possible, how good it could be. But meanwhile, your gut instinct and your heart and your intuition are going, this is right. So it does work both ways. It's not just simply a uh, preventative measure, it's also a proactive measure too, to put you into the right place where you say yes. I've had that with clients, in fact, where clients were, not dating, to be clear, but clients who basically were having their mind tell them they couldn't afford to work with me, but their gut instinct, their heart, and their intuition saying, this is where the work's gonna get done, we need to be here. And in some cases, clients have come back to me because they realized that was the case. And in some cases, they didn't listen and they walked away. And that's their choice, I, I'm not, I can't force anything. But I'm very clear with my clients that when they do feel the alignment, I'm happy because I know then we're gonna do some work together. If they don't feel some alignment, they might sign up still, but then I'm concerned that they may not be fully in, in, um, invested emotionally and energetically to do the work that's going to be um, ahead of us to work together just to be clear so 
this car analogy is an interesting one I'm throwing out just as it came up right before the broadcast because I didn't have a title planned. And it feels very easy to express this because for a lot of people, maybe it's just because I'm in LA, there's a lot of cars here, that people look at cars through a certain lens and may not look at relationships the same way. And I'm suggesting that maybe for the, for the nearest near future that you're out on dates, if you're single and looking to date, that you start thinking about the car analogy when you're on the date on them. Do they look better than they maybe they maybe they don't run so good energetically? Maybe when they're talking to you and you're having conversations, you may be realizing that maybe they're not really that present with you, or maybe you don't feel their emotional availability, or maybe you don't think they're that smart to be blunt. They look great from the outside, but it's like you're just in it just to what they look like. Are you in it for the whole course? Now, if you just want to be in a car that doesn't go anywhere but looks pretty at the side of the street, go for it. Same true with the dates. If you want to go with somebody who looks amazing, but there's no depth, no conversation, and sorry to say this, no creativity when it comes to sex and passion, go for that too. If that's what lines up for you. Personally, I'm not in that. But I'm not in that alignment for that. I'm talking about doing the deep dive where you have emotional maturity, mental clarity, and depth of intuition and heart that connects you. So there's much more to go on than just a physical body against body connection. Now, if that's what you want, that's great too. Go for it, as I said. But if you want more than that, hang on. <coughs> Excuse me. If you want more than that, then definitely consider what it is you really want to have and how you can get there. If this is something where you're a bit stuck and you want some more assistance, I offer my resources, my coaching, and my online courses and programs at service to support you getting what you want. Now, they're particularly tailored towards the women, but men who want some help can reach out to me as well. So to give you a um, quick... Um, it's not cliff notes, but a simple nudge and reminder about some things you might want to look at. For the women, especially if you've been on dates and you're not finding what you're looking for, maybe it's time to look back inside about what it is you really want. And also what's really not working because you keep putting up with it. The first part of my um, course called Attract the Man He Wants starts with what you don't want. So you clearly know what's not ending up. So you can then flip that to what you do want and then you build from there. I'll put a link in the comments so you can check it out. It's going to be barryselby.com forward slash ATM so you can check it out. It's an online course that is eight modules long and it also has coaching available as a bonus if you want to do that. Um, also, because you maybe, if this has stirred things up for you and you're starting to say, I need to have a conversation, I'll put a link in the comments so you can have a chat with me, which again, is, which the direct link is barryselby.com forward slash chat. I'll put the link in the comments as well so you can have a conversation with me and we can talk and see where you are and where you want to go and if I can assist you because if I can't it's fine too but if I can maybe your heart will tell you to line up with that just saying and thirdly as I did mention at the beginning of the broadcast I have a book out called 50 Ways to Love Your Lover I'll put a link for that in the comments too because that will help you get where you want to go um, and that is it if, it, if there's men looking for help just message me over social media I don't have any links that can put you directly in touch with me otherwise but over social media you can um, I hope this is making sense to you this is maybe provocative maybe it's easy maybe going oh yeah I know this stuff but then again maybe it's just too much assumption and maybe you want to look at this deeper than you've been looking so far are you looking at the paint or are you looking underneath for what you want in a relationship that's the question I'm going to leave you with to think about um, if you haven't seen my broadcast before, before by the way this is my daily Facebook live I do every day at 5pm Pacific time except tomorrow I'll tell you about that in a moment um, you can find my broadcast right here on Facebook on my personal page which is Barry Selby um that's 5 p.m. Pacific time, by the way. Can you join me live, interact, everything else? You can also interact in the replays as well and let me know you're watching the replay. And please put in your comments and questions. I'll respond when I sign off. Secondly, the replays go to my business page on Facebook, which is barryselby.author. You can please like my page. Um, you can find them there, although it seems like I'm not getting all of them there. They seem to cut off at a certain point. So thankfully, I got inspired and reminded to save my Facebook lives to my computer and then put them onto YouTube. So I have a YouTube channel which is Barry Selby on YouTube. So all my social media is my name, Barry Selby. So go to, go to youtube.com forward slash user forward slash Barry Selby. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel and on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine where all of my broadcasts from number one all the way up to this one, which is 852, are available for you to watch. Um, questions, thoughts, please put them below or respond when I sign off. Again, reach out to me if you want some support. I'll have links in the comments as I mentioned verbally. So you check those out. Oh, by the way, the book is barryselby.com forward slash book. I forgot that link but they'll be written in the comments. You can have them as well. This is my passion to support you and serve. Oh, tomorrow. I forgot to mention that. So tomorrow I am going to be going to a friend's showcase of a new CD 
So I'll be leaving a little bit early, which means I'll be doing this broadcast, probably gonna do this at 4 p.m. Pacific time, just you know, so just for tomorrow, my broadcast will be an hour earlier at 4 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, join me live or watch the replay either way. I trust you'll get value. Um, with that, I thank you for watching this broadcast. I do invite you to take care of yourself and to consider for yourself when you're looking at dates, are you more attracted to paint or to mechanics? Because that's really the difference in a relationship that will make it last or not. So with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again tomorrow, same time, excuse me, an hour earlier, same channel. <laughs> of course, correct myself. And with that, I thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon. Take care of yourself. Bye.